I consider it a blessing to be able to go, okay, I know the names that are on the wall of previous captains. These are guys that I looked up to who were, you know, who were in the club when I was playing football. The guys who were out there painting the lines on the field, who were at every practice, who were, you know, back when we had a, a cooking squad, was cooking pancakes and stuff on Thursday mornings for the quarterback club. And they were at the old, you know, at their old stadium. We'd run out of that smoking tunnel and they're banging on our shoulder pads and all that stuff. And I just want to make sure that I do well um, by my alma mater and uh, do well by those who have come before me. Welcome to SalinaRadio.com. I'm your host, Ron Lyons, and this is the voice of Salina, Texas. Guys, welcome to another episode of SalinaRadio.com. And that voice that you just heard, that is the voice of passion. I'm not even kidding. Passion for Salina, Texas. Passion for Salina football. And passion for the Salina quarterback club. Of which he happens to be the captain. And it's the 70th anniversary for the Salina quarterback club. So there's a whole legacy there. There's tradition, there's history, and as it turns out, that voice of passion used to actually play on the Salina football team. He grew up in Salina, moved away for a little bit, and then happened to come back to Salina and realized that this is actually home to him. This is where he's supposed to be, and through an awful lot of blessing and God's hand, Working in his life, he now sits as the captain of the Salina Quarterback Club. And let me tell you, he is super passionate. He's exactly the kind of person that we need leading this organization with so much history and such a legacy. And I think you're just going to love it. So guys, sit back, relax, and listen to my conversation with the man with two names, Guy Charles. All right, guys, I'm here today with somebody that is very, very, very interesting in all aspects of his life. Not only who he is today, but who he's been in the past, how he grew up with Salina and all that stuff. And and we're going to get into all that stuff. But before we do that, I'm not even going to tell you his name yet. I'm just going to tell you he's got a fantastic ghost story. And we're going to talk about the ghost story first. So without saying your name, you go back to the days when there was a, a ghost story as related to the high school. Tell us just a little bit about that. What, what, what was the story back then and what was the rumor and, and how did all that work back in the day? Yeah. So the up where the high school is now, uh, where the original Salina school was, uh, Alla, Alla Hubbard area. Um, there's a bell that's up there on the left side of the school and it's supposedly a documented Texas ghost story. Um, and the story was when we were in high school is that you would go out there middle of the night. I mean, it's pitch black. I mean, this is back when you could see stars in Salina. Uh, I don't mean celebrity stars, like stars in yeah, the sky. You mean, you mean the like legit in the like, sky yes, stars, uh, right? Yeah. The yeah. good old the, days. The constellations, all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, the, you would go out there and there's a plaque on the bell at the base of it. And it's a big old base if you've ever seen it before that tells the story of the school out there and uh, who Allo is or Allo, who Allo is. Um, and the story went that you would read the story backwards on the plaque, on the plaque. You would ring the bell three times. Right. And that road that runs to the left of the school was a white rock road. Okay. And that, you know, people don't know who driving on white rock roads. So you move on them fast enough. It's like driving on ice. Right. And kids would go out there and party and they would do this, ring the bell. And then, Supposedly, the ghost would come walking down the White Rock Road, and kids would take off and lose control of their car, run into trees. I mean, there was always rumors that kids died out there. I don't know if that's true, but that's the story of 
the ghost of Ala Hubbard out there. Gotcha. And so my story is um, when I was in high school, I was dating this girl and she had uh, a little sister um, that I think they were, she was fourth grade or something like that, fifth grade. And she was having a birthday party and her and her friends wanted to go out to do the ghost story. And their dad called me and said, hey, uh, they're going to be going out there. Can you and some buddies go out there and scare them? I'm like, okay, here, here, I, here I am. I'm like 16, 17 year old. I'm like, you want us to go out and scare a bunch of kids? You're yeah, like, don't hurt them. Just scare them. And you're all over it. You're like, absolutely, absolutely we can do that. Absolutely. So uh, I, I, I call up my buddy BLT. He's a guy I played on the line with. Awesome dude. And like, hey, man, you want to go have some fun? It's like, sure. What do we do? I was like, we get to scare some kids. All right. When do we need to be there? So we get out there. (laughs) And at the time, there was, uh, it was like an old airplane hangar, like the old uh, silver dome, you know, tunneled, like half tunnel. Right. And I I guess the gymnasium was in there. Never broke into it, so I don't know what was inside it. But um, anyway, I told him, I was like, dude, go over there. And he like climbed up on part of it. So, I mean. You know what it sounds like when you're walking on tin. It's right. making I'm like, right. Get over there and just be quiet. I climb up on the back of the bell. And it's a pretty big platform. I, right. I still don't know how I did it without falling off. But I, I climb up there. And I'm I'm waiting. And all of a sudden, here they come. And they're pulling up. And again, it's pitch black out there. Right. And there's this dim light that's on, you know, the, the, the hangar that's over here. And these little girls are like, oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to have the ghost story. And. They start reading it backwards. Which is what you were supposed, supposed to, to do. do. Right. And it's funny because I remember, you know, you've got these fourth grade kids trying to read this. It's not even a lit up plaque. It's like stone <laughs> carved, so like headlights on. Right. And I don't, how they didn't see me, I don't know. Um, but they ring the bell three times. Right. And I'm like, well, nothing's happening. Well, she's supposed to come walking under there like looking. So they start walking back towards the road. I have two bottles of rubbing alcohol in my hands. And this is a cast iron bell. I douse the bell and set it on fire. <laughs> no, I'm knowing it's not going to burn up, but this whole thing just like all of, all of a sudden. And, and, and these girls scatter. And then BLT's over here. He starts banging up and down, like making noises. <laughs> and like they were running every which way. I, I like, you probably traumatized. Oh, these we, kids we, we had for to come. Life. We had to come out because it was like some of them were like crying and we're like, okay, this went way too far. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my Salina ghost story. So, in case you don't know the voice right now, this is the man with two first names. His name is Guy Charles. It's Guy. actually three first names. Three first names. Yeah, middle, so, na- middle name's Austin. So. Okay, so Guy Austin Charles. I don't know why in the world you have three first names. It just worked out that well, way. It's better but- than what my parents wanted to name me. <laughs> Don't even after the ghost story. I don't even want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it is probably dramatic, but yeah. Guy Charles, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. Very, Doing very really good. good. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you for being on the show. And you happen to be the captain of the Salina Quarterback Club, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. So, okay. what's what, how is that? I mean, the Salina Quarterback Club—that's a big deal in town. And for people who don't know what it is. Tell us, what, what is the Salina Quarterback Salina Club? Salina Quarterback Club. The, the Salina Quarterback Club is the athletic booster club for Salina. Um, a lot of times we're having to explain to people, especially a lot of uh, people moving into town, that they think quarterback club, oh, okay, y'all just support football. And that's the farthest from the truth. Um, we're named that because the club was started back in 1953 uh, by a guy named Billy Parrish. If you don't know who Billy Parrish is, I challenge you to go research him just incredible story absolutely um but the club was started by a bunch of old farmers and um the idea was to raise funds you know we were a football town we we've always been a football town but we've always the meaning of the club is to always support all of salina athletics and um yeah it's it's i i love correcting people on that in a, in a loving way to go look you ought to see the money we raise and what programs we donate to and so forth. And it's all for the common good of pouring back into a younger generation. And that's, that's awesome. And you have invited me to come. I've not been able to go yet because unfortunately I don't know why in the world, but you guys meet 
before the sun even comes up. What's up, what's up with that? 5.30 is not early, man. You ought to try to get up at 2.30 from Plano and drive all the way up here. Yeah. 5.30 a.m. How often do you guys meet? So once football season kicks off, so it's usually right after our annual golf tournament, um, usually beginning of August, um, we meet through football season. Uh, every Thursday morning from 5.30 to 6.30, we're at the Athletic Banquet Hall. Um, and it's a place for men to come get plugged in. Um, and it's it's kind of like what you think. It's a bunch of guys sitting around drinking coffee. We always have a good breakfast, um, go over a little bit of club business. And then we toss it over to the coaches, and the coaches give us an overview, you know, break down the last week's game, and then they tell us what's coming up this week. Um, and then the other aspects of Salina is just um, – how can we pour back in the community? Like things we help out with, um, helping out with things as the uh, homecoming parade. Um, We have a mentor program that we kick off every year, actually just started last week, where guys sign up and they get paid or get paired up with a player of the team. And yeah, it's it's a way to actually pour back in. Um, And you have a real passion for Salina. And we've talked just briefly before we actually started recording today and, and and as you just alluded to you don't you don't currently live in Salina but <laughs> you don't have to live in Salina to I, love Salina I, I haven't lived in Salina since 01 so but you did grow up here you spent some of your life here and enough of the formative years of your life that it has made such an impact on you and so you desire so strongly to give back to the community now and we've talked a little bit about that one of the things that stands out to me, in our correspondence back and forth, you said something about anyone referring to me that's 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 doing something good for the community that I love so much and am passionate about. That's you're referring to yourself. Obviously, something has really, really stirred in your soul in the past to say, Salina's home. Salina <laughs> is really it. You may not physically yeah. live here today, yeah. although I do believe that you'll probably get back to Salina if, soon. If, if God opens those doors, I'll be back up here. Absolutely, but you still you've got a you've got an amazing passion for this city, and let's talk about that. So you you were here back in uh, high school days, and 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 you and you had experiences and stuff in this town that uh, kind of go back in time. Like now, we all see Salina. We know this great booming city and all that kind of stuff, but. You were here back, well, the ghost story is one thing. You were here back in those days when the population was less, when some of the, the building wasn't here. That the, the, the Traffic jams children. were caused by tractors and, and you know, combines 100%, and stuff like that. totally different Or you're getting days. stuck at the train track. I was late to school so many times because the train would stop in town and you couldn't get across the tracks. So, so help me understand. Yeah. What is it that makes Salina so amazing? What is it that makes Guy Charles just be like, yeah, Salina's my home. I don't live here, but Salina's my home. <laughs> Man, that's a that's a good question. Um, let me back up. So, like, my family moved to the area in 88. We didn't move to Salina. We moved to Prosper. My dad uh, became athletic director at Prosper from 88 to 93. Um, I started first grade in Prosper and was at Prosper from first grade to eighth grade. And um, my dad had stopped coaching in 93, went back and got his principal certificate and had become a principal in Anna. And after my eighth grade year, he said, hey, uh, we have a choice. We can move to Salina or we can move to Anna. Well, I was like, man, I, I'm not moving to Anna. And it's funny now just because how big a rivalry are with them. Um, I said, but I knew the guys in Salina. Salina had just won state in 95, my eighth grade year. Um, I remember following them. Uh, and that, and then I grew up playing little league with all these guys from Salina, and we knew each other, and it was kind of this love hate relationship. And but I respected them, and I'm like, no, let's let's move to Salina. And Salina also at the time had a marching band, so I was, you know, I was tell people I was a band nerd. I mean, I was a band nerd and a jock, and a, just the opportunity to go up. Okay, I'm gonna march in the band. My goal was to be in the marching band at A&M. Didn't, didn't happen. Uh, A&M didn't have what I wanted to do, but uh, we moved to Salina because of a town of traditions. I love it. And we are absolutely that. And, and we'll get into that just a little bit more about how the traditions help now with your recruiting, because that's one of the things you do. Right? Yeah. You've got to increase membership of the quarterback club. 
and something that kind of anchors this town is tradition. Yeah. In in all ways. I, don't, I wouldn't say kind of. Like it it the the traditions of this town there's a ton of old traditions and we're constantly making tr- new condition new traditions that that just feed back into the common good of everybody looking out for everybody. I love that. I that's the like life connected. Like it's it's not just a saying on on the side of something. It's it's if you truly are bought into what Salina is, it's going back to my motto, um, the core values of my company is doing what is right, love people, and work humbly. That's and, what we're called to do. I mean, that's what God calls us to do. And so I see that in Salina. I mean, all the way down to how our kids are raised. Um, Walking into the schools and there's students that are still saying yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am like isn't that amazing you 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 go you go ten miles down the road and you don't even find adults who say that right right so exactly yes. yeah you're you're absolutely right so so you 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 just you have this fire in your soul for Salina and you you there's a story about you coming back to Salina and you hadn't been here for some time. <laughs> And you you get invited, I think maybe maybe to a quarterback club meeting or something. No, I'm not it, it was it was sure. a, a town luncheon. I'd okay, gone to I'd gone luncheon. to a networking meeting um, in Prosper and ran into some old friends, and they're like, "Hey, you need to come. I'll come as my guest to the town luncheon." So so tell me about that. So you come back to Salina. You hadn't been through the town for a minute, and as we know around here, things change very quickly. Yeah. So so talk to me when you came back. What kind of what kind of realizations did you have of some of the change that you saw right when you came back into town and you saw uh, the, the football coach and you had a conversation with him and, and how did all that unfold that ultimately got you to joining the quarterback club and becoming the captain? <laughs> yeah. Um, man, that whole aspect, like God works in mysterious ways and there's opportunities that are placed in front of you where you're sitting there going, okay, I don't know how I'm going to handle this, but I'm going to walk through this door. And, uh, in doing that, man. So I started, you were telling me, they're saying that, you know, the coach had asked me, yeah, I'm at this luncheon running to coach LA. I hadn't seen him in years. I mean, I left Slime in 01. It was like, there's nothing for me here. It was a small town I grew up in and I'm going to go do my life. Never thinking I'd be back up here. And I run into Coach Elliott. Um, my business partner and I are, are launching our company. And he's like, when are you moving back up here? I'm like, mm, I hadn't thought about it. He's like, this is, this is Coach Elliott. This is Coach this. Yeah, Coach Elliott was, Coach Elliott was my position, position coach in high school. Like, I played on the line with Coach Elliott. He was my JV coach. I held hay with him in the summer. Like, this guy convinced me at... 200 pounds that I could block a 350 pound lineman. I'm and like, you did. I'm like, coach, the, the, the <laughs> physics don't work. He's like, just keep your head down and go. And it's, and it's funny because he convinced me that I could do things that are not physically possible. Sure, absolutely. And that has continued to transpire in my life of even with the quarterback club. Like I never thought I'd be sitting as captain of the club, especially on the 70th anniversary of the club to wow. sit here and go, okay, just keep your head down and go. Amazing. And it, it's, it's one of those things where I consider it a blessing to be able to go, okay, I know the names that are on the wall of previous captains. These are guys that I looked up to who were, you know, who were in the club when I was playing football. The guys who were out there painting the lines on the field, who were at every practice, who were, you know, back when we had a, a cooking squad, was cooking pancakes and stuff on Thursday mornings for the quarterback club. And they were at the old, you know, at their old stadium. We'd run out of that smoking tunnel, and they're banging on our shoulder pads and all that stuff. And those guys are what I knew as the club. And there's there's guys that were in that group that played in Salina that I know looked up to guys who were in those same shoes, you know, 20 years earlier. Right. And so to sit here as the captain of the club and go, I just want to make sure that I do well, um, by my alma mater and uh, do well by those who have come before me. Wow. I mean, gosh, just the, I, I have chill bumps right now. Like <laughs> it's amazing. And I'm sorry it, to get emotional. I'm an emotional guy, hey, but to talk about something that, you know, you know, what? I never thought that I would be back in this area going, 
you know what? This is a huge part of me. It's it's incredible, and please never apologize for having that. That just that's that that speaks to the core of the passion that I that I see, respect, and love in you. I think that's just amazing. It's overwhelming. I love it. It's fantastic. And let me just tell you, there there couldn't be a better person sitting as the captain of the quarterback club because that's what we need in a town like this. And this is kind of one of those things that's it's it's a little unfortunate. We could lose a lot of what makes us so unique if we're not super, super careful. And it's understandable. It's, well, it's growth. It's people it's growth. who yeah. they move in and they know that, you know, statistically this is the place to be. The schools are amazing. Um, we can get into a neighborhood and our home values are going to go up and we're going to be able to, you know, do this life. And it's a, it, it's, it's a very active and living community and it's something that people want to be a part of but if you're not careful if you don't know the history if you've never been to a game freezing your butt off on a friday night listening to a train horn yes (laughs) and and if you don't know the the history of the 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 boys and the coaches down on that field and the the support of the community and how I mean, you have you have the band, the drill team, the truly the, everything that makes Salina, the students in the stands. Like it's the joke was you could rob this town on an away game when I was growing up. You're like the whole town <laughs> shut down. I don't even think the gas station was. I don't even think EL had had uh, you know Bobcat Country open on away games. That's exactly right. And, the, and if you if you move in and you don't know that, then we, then we, there's a chance we could lose that. And, and we don't want to lose that. So so by all means, never, never apologize for that passion. We need as much of that passion and we need as much of that history. We need as much of that tradition to live for future gener- generations. And, and I'll never apologize for wanting to carry that forward and wanting to hold on to that part of my Salina. And I've been here for 30 years wow. and I love it. Yeah. And I pour my heart and my soul into this community and I do everything that I can to keep it amazing and, and so that, that kind of brings up a very interesting question, being the fact that, and, I, and I've got my feelings, and I'd like to know yours, how do you feel about all this growth? <laughs> you know, it's incredible. Um, from a business mindset, um, what a better place to be, especially if you're a small business owner. If you have a service that truly serves and impacts lives, and that's what your goal is, you need to be in slime. Right on. If you are looking for a place where family uh, faith and values are still around. You need to be in Salina. I remember Coach Elliott saying to me back that day I ran into him before I actually got involved in the club, and he said, um, "Hey, the reason that I need you involved, he goes, one, we don't hardly have any alum in, in the club anymore, uh, which is really surprising to me because I know we still have a ton of alum here at Living Town, but I get it. Life's busy. Life has gotten a lot more busy than growing up here." And he said, you're one of the people who will welcome new people with open arms. And it's funny because I don't live here, um, but I was a move in. And I remember how I was welcomed. I mean, granted, I had curly, you know, bleached blonde hair. I have a dark hair. So, I mean, bleached hair moved into this. <laughs> it was even more country than prosper. We're like, man, six miles up the road, man. They, that's really country up there. Right, right. And, you know, I... I like it was a great story recently over the past few years was Gabe Gayton. And he talked about when he came to slime him, he took his earrings out of his ears and he cut his hair. <laughs> that was me. I didn't have earrings. I got earrings after I left Salina, but right, right. It, was, it was one of those things of like, it was something, if you want to be a part of it, here's the traditions. And granted there's old traditions, there's new traditions, but the town as a whole, you can hate the growth or you can embrace it and make it yours. Um, the growth's going to happen no matter what. It, you, you can't escape that. And, you know, people will say, oh, I, I hate that. Uh, this has happened or so forth. It's like it, it was going to eventually happen anyway. And, and granted, I have a ton of friends who have moved because they don't like the growth. And that's fine. I, I'm a firm believer that... The great thing about living in the U.S. is to each is their own. And 
you know what? Go do what's best for you. But if you want to be a part of something, and you'll hear me say this a lot of times as a tagline, as I jump on Facebook Live from time to time for the quarterback club is, hey, for all you move-ins, um, welcome to the greatest town in Texas. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Guys, every time I talk to somebody like Guy Charles and we get a little reminder of the history and the tradition and the legacy of Salina, Texas, it just makes me so very proud of my city. And it is my city. I was born in Dallas, but baby, Salina, Texas is my city. Salina, Texas is your city. And I know you feel the same way I do. You get chill bumps just thinking about it. It's an amazing city. We're just, we're beyond blessed to be here. There's some people out there who are haters and stuff, but you know what? They're insignificant. I go on these message boards sometimes and I see some of the negativity and I think, you know what? That's not Salina. If you want to get the stuff that I'm talking about, the very positive, uplifting, and amazing stuff, find the best of Salina on Facebook. It's a group, and it's about 6,000 to 6,300 people as we record this podcast, and it's about 6,000 to 6,300 of the best people you'd ever want to hang out with. The group's amazing. You can talk about anything you want to talk about as long as you're kind and respectful. You can promote your business. You can brag about your kids. You can sell something. You can learn so much and you can make amazing friends. So guys, come on over to the best of Salina and check it out. We've got just incredible things. We really support small business. I say we support small business like nobody else in the city. We have networking events. We have all kinds of crazy fun things. I just can't even start to tell you all the cool stuff. So come check it out for yourself, guys. It really is the place to be if you love Salina, Texas. And very obviously, that passion that you have is is very well placed with the quarterback club. And people always want to know, like, okay, so people who've been here for a while, or they, you know, maybe they own a business, or they do something like that, or in your case, you're the captain of the quarterback club. And, and, and by the way, we are going to talk about your business in a minute. I, I do want to ask you about that. But people always want to know, what do you like to do in town? Where do you like to eat? What do you like to eat? What are some of your favorite things? So just, you know, being a person who you drive up here, how many times a week do you think you drive up to um, I'm any, I'm up here anywhere from three to four times a week. Um, so you, I typically you drive work, up? I drive up. Um, it, it's funny. It, it used to take me 28 minutes to get up here. Now it takes about 45. There's there's so many. Um, I think, if, I, you, know I think if you move to Texas, you have to put a student driver sticker on your car or something I mean, like that. That's probably a good yeah, idea. You know, so I, I, I'm going to blame <laughs> all of that traffic on Frisco. Oh, okay. I, hands down. I mean, there's... Uh, the traffic on Preston Road, and Preston is still the fastest way to get up here than wow. the tollway. Wow! Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and and I was in, I was, you know, I was, I was a part of Frisco back in the day. And one of the tests that we had uh, as a police officer is name all of the red light intersections in Frisco, and you could do it because you could count Main on Street one and One Twenty One. Pretty much, <laughs> that was it. There was there was less than five, <laughs> and. Of course, now I, I'm, you probably have five within just a couple of few miles on Preston Road. Now you couldn't name them all if you wanted to, but it, it it's just uh, one of those things that people like to know. What do you like to do? So I'm going to ask you, where do you like to eat when you're in Salina, Texas? And, and we're not picking favorites no, because it's understandable. They're, they're all good. But but if you had to say, hey, here's something that I really like, and so for other people can listen, say, hey, I'm going to go give that a try. What's give me an idea? What's what's the places you uh, like so to eat? First off, Elaine, my wife and I uh, just celebrate 17th anniversary. So well, I'll congratulations! Throw it out there. Thank you. Um, we are huge foodies, and a lot of that became because there's some food allergies in our family. So living in Plano, it's. We have every type of ethnic food you can think of, and we are adventurous, and I raise my kids to be adventurous in food. So coming up here to Salina, 
Like growing up in Salina, there was two places. Well, I'll take the back. There's three places to eat. There was Burger Fixins, right. which opened when I was in second grade. Right. Um, there was a place called Billy Bob's, right. yep. which is where Lucy's is. Mm-hmm. Uh, which great thing about Billy Bob's is you could get all you could eat chips and sweet tea and didn't have to pay anything. <laughs> um, and then the other was Jimbo's. Doggo was on the uh, right there where Toast of Walnut was. That's right. And that was what you could eat in Salina. There was nothing to eat in Prosper. Um, so coming back up here after all these years and seeing what's up here and having that foodie mentality and go, man, there's some there's some quality stuff up here. Sure is. So places I like to eat. Um, before Salina, being a foodie, um, barbecue was never on my radar. Right. Which don't. I'm also one of those Texans who likes beans in my chili. So, you know, and I tell people when you, when you, when you, when you're, when you're raised poor, you have to put beans in there. Cause we, we didn't have enough money to just have all meat. So, Absolutely. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. um, it, with, with barbecue, it's one of those things of going, okay, I respect the process of it, but I just, oh, you haven't had a good barbecue. I'm like, I've had a lot of barbecue and I just don't like it. Right. Then I had Tinder and I walked in and I'm going, Okay. This is this is legit. This is the real deal. And my cardiologist doesn't like me eating there <laughs> every day of the week. Sorry, Terrence. Um, and but I would say my between tinder and toaster walnut, and I would say toaster walnut I love just because it has that fresh aspect. Now and all the other restaurants we have in town, great food, but also you know between Terrence and between Joey, they're two great guys that I can sit and just literally chew the fat with and we can talk food right on. like i love to cook good and you know it's those are those are those are my jams here and that, that's what if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna have to narrow it down you're gonna go maybe to one of those two and and give me an idea if you're gonna well, roll I, into, and, and i and i love don't get me wrong i love jimbo's but i i i have a dairy allergy like i i can't eat it right on. and i remember destroying jimbo's pizza back in the day and then it destroyed me so you <laughs> it know it, the yeah, favor. yeah so right. i mean yeah the the fact that i still see doggo around town and just go man like that was a dude that used to feed us when we were coming in you know after two days just smelling the high heaven downtown was i mean run down literally right. Right. um so yeah Yep. No, Sorry for the it. ramble. Go back down memory lane. So you're so, no, but that's a good island. We love taking those trips with people. So, so you you roll into Toasted Walnut, and what is Guy Charles going to find on the menu that he's going to like? What are you gonna What are you What are you gonna gravitate towards when you go to Toasted? So so it's funny because I you know uh, Joey and I talk on Facebook Messenger all the time, and uh, he's. I, this the secret menu. I guess you actually have to live in the town to be able to experience the secret menu because I've never got to experience the secret menu. And most of the stuff on the secret <laughs> menu, like again, my cardiologist wouldn't approve, and right. it usually has cheese on it, so I'm out. So, right. um, but I go in the toasted walnut. Like my go-to is the chicken salad. Oh well, and nice. chicken salad. I I, I love cucumbers. Um, so cover it all in crushed red pepper, and I'm good with that. With that avocado, man. It's it's solid, wow. and it also it's just being in that restaurant. Like, I when the, when the place was Jimbo's, like we were only allowed in like the first you know fifteen square feet. Like right, we right. never were in the back of the place. So right. to actually walk in and see these old buildings, these like the old house we're in right now. Like I've been in a lot of these homes, and it's incredible to see how Salina has still held on to the quality of the town, but has just improved it. Absolutely. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And just for reference, we're in the, the famous blue house right off the square with the yellow door. Yep. And uh, the plans for this uh, house as of right now are to turn it into a restaurant. And one of the things that me and my wife want to do is we want to preserve the historical integrity of these older homes. We could knock this down. This is a great spot. And we could build from the ground up something brand new. But we don't want to do that because we love the history of Salina. And it's like an old cast iron skillet, man. It's got seasoning on it. It's like, and that, that's, that's what I cook in. I, I used to clean and restore old cast iron. So, you know, there's something about using history. A hundred percent. And I'm all on board for that. I think now, obviously it's, it's, it's harder. It's more expensive. Oh. There's nothing really easy, you know, knocking, demoing and building from the ground up is always less expensive than, 
you know, repurposing an old house like this, a hundred year old house is, that's tough. You Something know? worth keeping is worth fighting for. But absolutely. But this is going to help put the downtown square on the map. This oh, is going to yeah. be something amazing. And thank God we've got the ability to actually do that. Now, we haven't started running through the process of permits and all that. So there may there may be a few there may be a few little roadblocks along the way, but you know, God willing, this is gonna come to fruition and one day you'll be able to sit there and say, Hey, I sat right here mm-hmm. in what is now the piano lounge of this re- amazing restaurant and, and we talked about Salina history and how amazing <laughs> Salina was. And, yeah. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully that that'll be sooner rather than later. But you've got a very interesting Story, or, or uh, I guess, kind of a, a path uh, in your personal employment that has led you to where you're at right now. So, you were in Salina. You wanted to grow up, get out of here. You went to school. You actually did some stuff, or, or had some training in, in the audio field. Basically, yeah, I'm, I'm a degreed audio engineer. I mean, if that's worth anything. I, I haven't touched it, and and so you're probably hating everything, bit, bit of my equipment and everything that we have. Right, we're in a very yes. acoustically. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being polite. Be polite. Thank you for that. It, I mean, it is still the number one podcast in Salina. Dude, so. I, I I listen to your stuff, and I'm I'm sitting there going, <laughs> with the technology today, like it's it's incredible the quality you can get out of equipment now. You don't you don't have to have a twenty thousand dollar microphone in front of you. Thank God for that, because yeah. I'd be in an awful lot of trouble yeah. right now. <laughs> as you're sitting there with your Walmart headphones on right now, oh, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So. But you, you started that, you went down that path, you, you had some training and, and you had your degree in that, and then ultimately you ended up doing something very different. So take me on that path from, <laughs> you know, leaving Salina, getting your education and landing in the, the field that you're in right now. Yeah. So uh, graduated college, at, went to a trade school in Florida called Full Sail, um, got out of there in 2002, came back. Um, I was one of the audio engineers for Stonebriar Church in Frisco. Um, recorded classical music, jazz, choir, pipe organ, like not your typical audio engineering stuff. Um, had an opportunity that came up in, let's see, I got married in 2006, uh, at around, right around the end of 2007, had some people approach me about, um, let's... We want to do a car wash. A car wash? A car wash. Wow. And they knew okay. I was good with talking with people, and I, that's not something I... I'm just relational. Like, I'm a connector. Again, do what is right, love people, work humbly. Like, that's that's the MO. Um, and so <laughs> the car wash is going to be in Houston. My wife's from Houston. And so it was like, hey, we're moving to Houston. So we moved to Houston, and... Over the next four years, that's where I tell people I went through the Vietnam of customer service. <laughs> I like that. Um, I ran a car wash down there. I mean, dove head first into it. And this wasn't your typical machine car wash. This was a hand car wash. I had 30 employees. Like, we were cranking out three to 400 cars a day. Is, is this when you had the long hair and earrings? Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't have earrings anymore after. after I, I, I got rid of the earrings after I got married. But, yeah, anybody who knows me... Um, look at my Facebook page, go back to my pictures and my style has changed so many times. It's, it's, I keep reinventing yourself. Oh, dude, I, I've, I've had a mullet. I've had a mohawk. I've had dreadlocks. I've had, you know, uh, yeah, I got and right now. Everybody sees me with the handlebar mustache. So, um, being down there in Houston. Yeah. I was clean cut when I showed up down there. Um, I dealt with every pimp, prostitute and drug dealer, Southwest Houston. Those are my easy customers. <laughs> But I learned how to de-escalate situations fast. Nice. Being in that situation. I left there, had hair down to my shoulders, and uh, you know, I looked like an episode of Duck Dynasty. <laughs> um, moved back up here. Elaine and, Elaine and I were like, let's leave Houston. We want to go back home. So she had gotten a job up here, um, which she's still at today. Um, she's a mental health counselor for a prestigious private school in Dallas. Nice. Um, been there for 13 years. Uh, just incredible at what she does. But in coming back, we lived apart for a year because I couldn't have work up here. And I finally quit the car wash and was like, all right, move back up here. Again, I'm a connector. Started leveraging relationships. I messaged, I don't know, 1,500 people like looking for work, blah, blah, blah. And it's funny because what I do now, I had a lot of people offer me and again, didn't think about it. Um, had a buddy who had just bought a company doing insulation. Um, of energy retrofit of old homes. And I did that for 
almost eight years. Wow. And it just, it's funny, each step of the way, you look at my resume, and you're like, what path is this guy on? Well, I'm on God's path. Because some reason, <laughs> right God on. put me in every situation to prepare me for the next step. I love that. Um, yeah. And so after, uh, I think it was 2009, summer 2019, um, God had a different change of plans for me. Didn't know what I was going to do. And a buddy at church came and approached me. and was like, hey, man, what do you know about the financial service industry? what financial planning I'm like man no with integrity does that work like growing up in a small town the guys that I n- knew who one we always thought financial planning only the wealthy did used right um, two the guys who were doing financial planning were snake oil salesmen like it was all about pushing product it wasn't about serving or anything like that so as I'm sitting and talking with my buddy who's a slow talking country boy I mean, grew up in Allen but farm, his family has a 400-acre farm up in Westminster. I mean, he grew up Paul and Hay like I did. Uh, he's like, man, this is what I do for a living. I'm like, you, th- this country bumpkin is making a living doing this. I'm like, Dude, it's about serving people. I'm like, well, that's something that I've looked for in every job I do. So, um, yeah, I dove into it. Um, been... Uh, in 2020, we launched Teleos Financial. Okay, Teleos. Teleos, there's some meaning to that. What, is, what does Teleos mean? So Teleos is, um, and you hear, you, Teleos is, a, is Greek for the concept or the mindset of seeing something through to completion, to see something through to maturity. Um, so we're a, a financial planning service. Um, and what does that mean? Again, people are like financial planners. Okay, are you stockbrokers or you know, you know, what snake oil are you selling and so forth? Um, first off, our core values go back to what you keep hearing me repeat: Micah six eight. Do what is right, love people, work humbly. Um, man, the best way of describing what we do. Do you have a junk drawer in your house? I do actually, probably two or three, but yes. Yeah, I, I have two or three, or just depending on which drawer my daughters are like throwing junk into. So, um, most people have a junk drawer, and what that means is, so you have this spot in your home where you keep random stuff—nuts, bolts, paper clips, pins—you know, you name it—it's probably in there. And the only time you go to that junk drawer is when you have to fix something, or you're trying to address a situation, or so forth. Sadly enough, most of America treats their finances that way. And I, a bit of it's just information overload. For, I mean, what we on the internet and so forth. So people have this financial junk drawer. They're like, okay, uh, Aunt Susie sold me this. Um, Bill, my buddy from high school, told me I needed this. I have this 401k from a previous job. Uh, Dave Ramsey told me to do this. Um, and that's how we handle our finances. Again, you go back to a junk drawer when you need to fix something or address something. So when people have to start figuring out what's in their junk drawer, their financial junk drawer, um, maybe an investment opportunity comes up. You deal in real estate investment. You, hey, I need liquidity. What do I have? What can you start trying to sort it? And you're like, uh, I got a little of this. What can I use this? So forth. Or um, I'm about to approach retirement. I'm three to five years out. Okay, well, how? what do I have in order? I mean, you're three to five years out from retirement. Like this, we could have addressed this earlier. But again, there's still hope there because we we've got this junk drawer going on. The worst case scenario is when a spouse dies. I mean, you hear people going, "Okay, do you have your estate in order?" Well, having that financial junk drawer in order can be huge. Heaven forbid a spouse passes. So what we do is we sit down with individuals, we sit down with families. Um, big part of our wheelhouse is small business owners because it works both in families and in business. And we take this junk drawer and we dump it out. We're not throwing it away. We're dumping it out and going, okay, this makes sense here. And I'm talking with my hands. All you people listening can see me talking with my hands. (laughs) This makes sense here. Okay. We have this. I don't know why we have this and so forth. And what we're doing is we're creating a roadmap that can give some peace of mind. Like, I don't know about you, man, but peace of mind is, um, it's a currency. Like to be able to go to bed at night and go, okay, I know this is taken care of. 
sadly enough, just going, okay, I, I've accumulated all this stuff. That's a peace of mind. No, knowing it all works together. It's not about how much you accumulate. It's about how you efficiently accumulate and what options you have on your money. So, um, that's what we do. And that's kind of out there, uh, trying to explain it, uh, for y'all who are listening, but yeah, uh, business owners, I would say is just helping them. How do you retain key employees? Taxes. Oh my gosh. We, we have CPAs that calls for tax strategies all the time. We help people manage assets. We just, I'm trying to be, Teleos is just trying to be back in an area where we can build relationships that turn into clients, but that clients turn into friendships. That's our end goal. I'd much rather have a book of business that's full of friends because you're more likely to pick up the phone and call a friend and ask for help than to go, oh, I'm, I'm sorry for bothering. It's like, no, bud, we're friends. Like, what, what do you need? Okay, we've walked through this. Let's revisit it, you know, go from there. So that's exactly what you do. So you're not just trying to build relationships for the sake of building uh, your, your bank account, so to speak. You're actually trying to establish relationships because when you have a friendship or when you have a relationship with someone that you happen to also have a working relationship with, let's say in my case, I'm much more likely to pick up the phone and say, Hey guy, I am considering doing this. I need a little bit of guidance. Yeah. Can you help me with this? As opposed to maybe after the fact, I call you and go, Hey, uh, I, I did this and I hope that it's okay. Yeah. We, we've had that. We, you know, we've had clients that call us and go, Hey, I bought a lake house this summer. And it's like, Okay, they, they could afford the lake house, but it's like, okay, let's go back and re- revisit this. Um, huge blessing for me is most guys that step off into this industry are out on their own. Uh, my business partner now has been doing this almost 18 years. Um, it's literally working with my best friend. That's, it's, awesome. that's the And he, he understands. Like, if we would have known each other in high school, we probably ended up in the back of a squad car together. Like it's we're, <laughs> We have, both have the same sense, sick sense of humor and so forth. And, and, and oddly, just as a side note, because of our age differences and, and how we've landed in Salina, had you done that... You, you would have probably the, been your squad car, yeah. It could have been my squad car. Yeah. So yeah, just I'm not trying to de- like age myself too oh, much, yeah, yeah. but it really well could have been. So <laughs> anyway, so... so so this guy's like your best friend and you guys are in business together. We knew each other six months before we got in the business together. Wow. Wow. And that's again, it's God opening a door and going, walk, walk through this. Yes. And man, it's just, it's been incredible. I mean, and not all of our clients are, are friends. Like we do order taking, meaning that, Hey, someone contacts us and goes, I need life insurance. Right. Okay, great. We're brokers. We can touch about 90 different carriers. What do you need? Let's walk through this. Or, you know what? Uh, Someone told me to look at this annuity or uh, long-term care or, you know, where you're talking product-based, which is good. There's a place for that. But the great thing in doing, like, financial planning, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all. Right. I don't know about you. When was the last time you tried on a one size fits all t-shirt? It never works. Like it goes on, but right. is yeah. it tailored made no, no. for you? And that's the joke. Cause my business partner's name's Taylor. And we're always like, we tailor make financial plans. Nice. There's too many variables for a one size fits all. Sure. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's who we are. We're Teleos financial. We office here in Salina. We do have an office down in Dallas, but nine times out of 10, you're going to find us up here because we're wearing boots and jeans. Right on. Um, yeah, we like to go, Hey, we're going to go pitch washers or shoot guns with people or, you know, we're good old boys just trying to serve because that's where God put us. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the calling on your life. And I love it. So tell me real quick, if somebody wanted to have some sort of uh, an interest in the uh, Salina quarterback club, how does that process start? How do they reach out to you? Is there a website? Man, I, 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 I appreciate you asking that. Cause that's, like I said, you, me going in the club, like, one, never thought I'd be sitting here doing a podcast. One, I didn't think Slina Record would be reaching out to me to go, hey, we want to write an article. Like, it's just me pouring back into my hometown. Right on. But to be able to communicate the common good of the club, um, the way to get plugged in. Man, you can you can find us on Facebook. I'm pretty sure if you've moved in the town, um, within a short period of time, you're going to hear of things of Salina that could be everything from the quarterback club to Bobcat moms to the band booster. Like we are a youth oriented town. Granted business is coming here, 
but the common good is pouring back into the young people of this town. Right on. I mean, that's that's what makes a town is you're, you're raising up the next generation. Um, so to get plugged in with the quarterback club, easiest ways during football season, like right now, um, as you said, every Thursday morning, 530 in the morning, <laughs> up at the athletic banquet hall. So that's at the high school above the weight room. Um, and as you're sitting here saying this, you're like literally looking at me like five, like expect me to. Dude, I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this because people, there's people that are wrong. I get up at 245 on Thursday morning. So we always, our, our meetings start kicking off um, right at the beginning of football season. So, so you're underway right now. Yeah, we're underway right now. We just had our third meeting this morning. Um, and it is, we start at 530. It's 5.30 to 6.30. We, nine times out of ten, end right at 6.30 because men, you know, are going to work. they got to right. get out of there. Absolutely. So come get some coffee, some dark coffee. And, um, <laughs> at that and, time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's strong. It's like pine tar. It's there strong. There you go. Um, and uh, we always have a good breakfast. Right. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's showing up. And, man, if, if you're one of those guys, it's like, I don't know if I can show, show up. Come look for me. Just introduce yourself. Right on. I will introduce you to guys who are plugged in there. It is a place to feel like you belong. There's there's not a lot of places for men to feel like they're belonging anymore, unless it's, you know, hey, a good group of Bible study where guys are working on themselves, right, or right. you know, go out and play golf or so forth. But to actually show up to a place where the common good is to pour into the younger generation. Very good stuff. Why not be a part of that? I mean, that again goes back to living connected. That's, so. and that and that's worth a that's worth a getting up early and showing up for, and 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 so is there uh, like a Facebook page? Is there? Yeah, most uh, nine times out of ten, like the communication through Facebook. Once you are involved in the club, um, we use an app called Team Reach. Okay. Um, and that's we use Facebook and Team Reach to, to communicate. Okay. Um, constantly, okay. you know. And social media is where it's all at, right? <clears throat> social now. media is where it's all at. Right. Um, and yeah, it's. There's still, once you get involved and you start knowing guys, guys got each other's phone number. It's like texting, you know, gotcha. yeah. Hey, we're volunteering for this event. Show up. Right you know? on. And you guys also, if I, if I'm correct about this, you have a table at the home games. Some, some usually set up. Was that like right inside the entrance? Yeah. Or? Right, right at the entrance. Um, and as soon as you come in, you'll see a setup. Um, and it's, it's great. Cause there's, there's always good tables that are set up like, Bobcat Moms. If you have not been to Bobcat Moms table, like that is the swag table. Like the swag oh, table. Oh, <laughs> oh, they what Bobcat Moms does uh-huh. for for you know our community right. is incredible. What they sell at the games, like there's some pretty cool stuff there. That's so uh, awesome. we're we're not the swag community. Although this year for the seventieth anniversary I, I brought back the Pearl Snap shirt. I've been wearing Pearl Snap since junior high, so we got the Eli <laughs> Cattleman shirt. Um, so, That's awesome. yeah, show up at the games. Come talk to us. Um, right we have membership dues once a year. It's 10 bucks to join. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's such a great and worthy thing. I mean, it's obviously... 70 years. That's incredible. It's incredible. So if you want to talk about legacy, you want to talk about history, you want to get plugged in in the city of Salina, and you want to do something that's worthwhile, if you're a gentleman who loves this community and wants to be a part of something amazing, show up, get up, 5.30 Thursday, no, be there 5.30 Thursday be there. morning. Come be there. And, and, it, and it's it's one of those things that we do it during football season. Right on. Like it's, and, but we stay connected throughout the, throughout the throughout year. The, throughout the year. Right um, on. And again... It's not something just for football. Like, right. I, I, I have guys in the club who don't have kids in the program. I don't have kids in the program. We have band parents in the program. I mean, we it, it's it's a place for men to belong and to come pour back in. That's that's our common goal. It's amazing. You, you, you got me, man. I am hooked. I am definitely going to be there. Typically, my best work happens in the evenings and into the wee hours of the morning because that's just well, the way okay I'm well I'll, I'll call you when i'm getting up and <laughs> you meet me up there i'm just what i'm gonna do is on thursday i'm just not gonna go to bed hey there you I'm go gonna, there, we have some guys are like that they get off night shift and yep. they just show up I, i'm just gonna roll in there like that i'm gonna look for the coffee i'm gonna grab the donut or whatever you happen to have that day and i'm just gonna sit there and be present 
knowing that I'll be awake through most of the things that happen that matter through the day. But um, and, and they can find you on Facebook. They can show up to the game, walk up to your table, look for the guy that has three first names. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know I was going to pick on yes. that again and uh, be a part of that. But let's, let's talk about your, uh, your business. So if somebody had some sort of uh, interest in financial planning or one of those other things that you guys do, how can someone find your business? Yeah, our website is teleosfinancial.com. And That's, you're going to have to spell yeah, Teleos. I will spell it. Um, it's T E L. E I O S Telios and then financial.com. Gotcha. And so if you need services and you, and I didn't know this, you guys, you do have an office right here in Salina. Yeah, we, we, we have a, a small office here in Salina. We office out of the Keller Williams building. Gotcha. Um, Georgina Hennon, who runs that, I always tell people she used to beat me with a paddle when I was in grade school. <laughs> I, I, grew, I grew up with her son, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a great place to be because so many there's so many realtors up there who are shaking hands with everybody that's moving in. And it's right. like, Hey, welcome to the greatest town in Texas. There and then go. how can we help you with your finances? There you go. <laughs> so, so, so I have one last question for you and then we're going to get out of here. Cause I know you've got a very, very busy and crazy life like I do, but I just, I want to ask you something that's it's a little serious. It's kind of on the, it's kind of on the real side. And, okay. and, and, and that is what exactly would it take to get you to move back to Salina, Texas, man, God's timing. That's, you know, um, if it's meant for us to be back up here, it'll happen. Um, my wife's got a great job. She loves the idea of Salina. My girls, they, anytime they see something orange, they're like, oh, it's, it's Bobcat. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I my girls that. wear slime of clothes, and we live in Plano. <laughs> That's the best. Um, yeah. <laughs> so to to get back up here, um, it's something that, you know, we pray about uh, quite a bit, but it's God's timing. If, if it's meant for us to be up here, We'll be up here. So maybe so maybe that's what so maybe that's what we do. Maybe what we do is we say, Hey, if you happen to be a believer and you want to, you feel so inclined, say a little prayer for this family. Again, the greatest yep. town in Texas. Greatest town in Texas. I love that. If if I didn't if I if I was the kind of guy that would steal things, I would I would literally take that and trademark that. That is some good stuff right there. And buddy, you have been amazing today. Thank you so much. Thank We've you, got sir. to get you up here to Salina. Um, guys, go out there, check out the quarterback club, see what's going on. It's fantastic stuff. You've got a guy with three first names running it and and he feels the calling and God is definitely working in his life. He's moving things. He's 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 the greatest chess player of eternity and he's moving the pieces. He certainly moved the pieces for Guy Charles and I think we're going to continue to see that. So Guy, thank you so very much and God bless, brother. Thank you, buddy. So what did you think about Guy Charles? Is he not everything that I said? He's just so full of passion, passion for Salina, passion for the Salina football team and passion for the Salina quarterback club. And it's so cool that he actually grew up here back in the day and he had so many of those really good, strong Salina men lifting him up, helping him become who he is today. And now he's come full circle and he's back as the captain of the Salina quarterback club. And let me tell you, this is an enthusiastic guy. If you have not seen him out there at the Salina football games, and if you haven't seen some of his videos and things like that, then you're missing out. Guy Charles is exactly who you want sitting in the captain's seat of the Salina Quarterback Club. And quite honestly, I, I want him back in Salina. I want him living here. I want to run into him at Brookshire's and say, hey, man, what's up? And just get some of that energy that he's got because that's that's the kind of person he is. He's a very strong believer. He's a very, very good man. And I think that Salina is better because of Guy Charles. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this a lot. I hope you really got a lot out of it. 
we try so, so hard to bring you people like Guy Charles and to make your life better by pouring into you and showing you the better side of Salina, Texas. So that's going to wrap it up today, guys. We've got great guests still coming up. We're weeks and weeks booked. It's going to be incredible. And I do have another little treat for you. It seems like everybody's really loving whenever I throw some sort of special song on the end. And I don't know why, but Guy Charles just takes me back to my own high school and high school football and all of that stuff. And that was back in the 80s. So I'm going to throw a 1980s song on the end here. And I hope you really like that. And don't forget, guys, go check out the best of Salina on Facebook. And we've got some very, very special things coming for you through that. And for now, guys, like I always say, stay safe. And God bless.